Hi, I am so happy you're here with me today back for another episode of my live weekly um, health coaching for horse women. We are already on episode four. It feels like I just started this last week, but I've been going for about a month now. Oh, I just l love doing this. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm learning more and more about um, just how to get this information out to you. So thank you for bearing with me if you're ones of the ones <laughs> that started off with episode one and you're back for more. Thank you so much. I appreciate it more than you even know. So yeah, I'm just going to give everybody a chance to hop on here and We'll talk about some exciting stuff today that I know is really going to help you out with being at the top of your fitness game. So, good deal. I love when I see some thumbs up. I love when I see comments because that just reaffirms that everything is going great and that we can see and hear each other. Hey, Kimberly, Marie, Karen, Lindsay, good morning, ladies. Glad to have you on today. Just wondering what everybody's up to. Gidget, hello. Sweet, we've got a good, a good group gathering. Hello, Rebecca. So get this, you guys. Um, I I can't believe that I'm going to say this, <laughs> but I am going to get to the point where I have a consistent time to announce the health coaching for horse women episodes. <laughs> it's such an evolution. It's so fun how thing things evolve because. Behind the scenes, for me, I, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a rancher, um, trying to get this homeschool thing done through the corona epidemic and pandemic. I'm trying to get my horses ready. I've got the bills and the housework and the yard and, um, you know, just the stuff, lots of stuff. It can get overwhelming very easily. And, and that's a, overwhelmment and anxiety and stress are things that are familiar to me and in the past probably two months I've decided to step up my game with um, you know just taking my own accountability and understanding um, that I needed to do something for myself to get to a place where I felt in control so you have to let me know if that's familiar to you, if you, you can relate to what I'm talking about. It's, sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable and um, let you know, you know, I, I always want to lead with my best foot forward. I, wanna, I want you to see the most um, positive, uh, successful me that I can pr present to you, um, you know, being a leader, being an influence in the health and fitness world, uh, especially for horsewomen. Um, but sometimes that means that I need to keep it real and explain um, in detail where I struggle. Um, just because I know when I work through my struggles and I can share with you what's working, then you can do it too. So I, I think that's a huge piece. Um, and, and it's not always easy. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage. Um, so anyway, um, that's what's prompted me to do, do this, do this episode. It's just something that I know that I'm meant to do and, and it's exciting for me to learn things and then share it with other people who actually give a shit, you know, <laughs> that care about this and, and then what, what I'm saying resonates and speaks with you. Uh, so having said that, I, I have never been in control of my calendar, I feel like. Um, some things I am and the things that, that will move the needle, um, I, I'm not so much. So having the ability to go, okay, I am running this this business, this health coaching business for you, and I have my crap together enough to say I can commit to being here on a certain time on a certain day. It, it's crazy, you know. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it's the the beauty of um, video and having people come and go at will. It, it's that that piece of um, flexibility is really cool too. So. Let's get started. I think we've got a good, um, yay, okay. Hey, Candy. Good, all right, let's do this. I got a fun one for you today. 
This one is, uh, oh, here's another funny thing that I noticed Facebook is doing. So if I talk about weight loss, because it, weight loss is an important topic and it is real. It does not have to be gimmicky or salesy or anything. It's a real thing. So it kind of frustrates with me with Facebook. Here's what I mean. When I say the words weight, when I type the word weight loss in any of my content that I publish on Facebook, they, they censor it. They will only show you my stuff um, to just a few people, probably the ones that turn on the notifications um, that you want to see things released. So it's frustrating. I have to kind of use code. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing today. I'm using some code for you. So on episode four of Health Coaching for Women, um, I want to give you three tips that will put you at the top of your fitness game, but I also mean at the top of your weight loss game. If that's what you're wanting to do is lose weight and get in great shape to ride your horse, I'm gonna give you three tips that'll put you at the top of your game. Good, so that's what we're gonna go over. And I just have to let you know that these are three things that have blown the lid off of things <laughs> for me in the last several weeks. They're really new, really close to my heart, really some amazing aha moments that I want to offer you. So if you're into taking notes during these, I think it'd be a great time, unless you're driving, of course, to get a piece of, pen, piece of paper and a pen and jot down some things about how you're going to put these into action for you when you get off. All right, so let's do this. So the first one, crap. I want <laughs> crapola. <laughs> Let me just run through what they are really quick as an overview of what we're going to cover in the next few minutes. So number one is say yes. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through some things that we did in the previous episodes. Um, you don't have to stop and go back and watch right now. It'd be a good idea just to get a feel for how I'm running this health coaching sessions each week. The second one that we're going to talk about is how we can make it easy. If things are hard and they're not doable, we're not going to stick with them. So we'll talk about making it easy. And then the third one is committing to performing at a high level. I'm going to talk to you about this really badass documentary that I am currently watching that is motivating me like you cannot believe and I'll tell you how it's doing that. So that's what we got in store for you. Then I'll let you go um, get busy upping your fitness and weight loss game. Okay, you with me? Let's do it. Number one. Number one is, how did I put it? <laughs> Just two words. <laughs> Say yes. Now, it's kind of a trend lately, isn't it, where people s are teaching everyone, say no. Say no. Don't, don't take on more things. And that is true. I don't want you to go say yes to everything that comes your way. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll take responsibility for that. Yes, I can do it all. That's not what we're talking about here. It is not accumulating more to-dos. It is talking about how you can say yes to your current reality so that it diffuses the resistance that you're feeling to the present moment. This is so huge. So to, to do this, let's review. I think this is from episode one, where I talked about how your circumstances, sir, come stances, um, in your thoughts, and you're, I'm not even apologizing for my inability to spell anymore. <laughs> Actions get you your results. So there's a lady, um, Brooke Castillo, came up with this model. And it just follows that notion that your thoughts create your feelings that drive your actions that get you your results. Went over it heavily in episode one. It's a great place to start if this is all new to you. Um, so basically what I want to talk about in this uh, lesson today is these are um, in your control, which is really cool because if you want different results, you learn to get control of your thinking, which makes you feel a certain way, which compels you to take certain actions, and these actions produce these results. So this is a very clear thing. But we kind of left out 
what to do with our circumstances. So let's define circumstances for a second. Though That's just your present reality, how much you weigh, what size you wear, how you feel, if you have an illness, if your joints are stiff, if your eyes are puffy, if you have allergies, if you um, don't have enough money, if you are surrounded by people who are negative. Um, just If you can just get out a pen and describe your present current reality. Those are your circumstances right now. The thing about them, the thing about your circumstances, the way it is right now, if you were just to describe your whole situation to whoever would listen, these are not in your control. This is a really big piece here because I want you to raise your hand if you don't like how you feel, you don't like how you feel, you don't like what you're thinking, you don't like how you feel, you don't like the actions you're taking, you don't like the results you're getting, and you think if you can just control these circumstances, if that person wouldn't talk so mean to me, if he would just do the dishes, if he would just do that, if um, I had more money, if I had more time, if I had this, if I had that, then all my thoughts, feelings, actions, uh, and results would be different. Okay, raise your hand if you felt that way before. Um, so that is what I want to shift for you. I want to offer a mindset shift for you is that these circumstances, your current reality. So let's just take your weight, okay? So if you stepped on the scale this morning and you know what today's weight is, that's a circumstance. <laughs> You can't do anything about what you weigh today. It is what it is, all right? So that's fine, okay? So how I wanna work this in to saying yes is what other option do you have? <laughs> you got on the scale, it told you a number. There is no other choice than to say yes, that's what it is. Say yes to reality. Say yes to your current situation. Does that mean that your current situation can't change? Absolutely not. That isn't what we're talking about here. Let's take for a second, let me just make sure I'm on track with what I wanna do. Yes, I am. If you say no to your current situation, so let's say you get up, you get on the scale, it tells you a number, and you say no, which if you're not at your goal weight, it's really easy to do that. Another one is, you, you decide to put on a, a pair of jeans, right? And they're too tight. <laughs> how many people have ever done that before? I want you to start learning how to say yes to that instead of no. Because how many times do we step on the scale or try on a piece of, piece of clothing or see ourselves in a picture and we say no to it? What happens when we say no to something like that? So the no usually comes in the form of... Um, I don't like how I look. I don't like what that number says. It shouldn't be like that. I should weigh less. I should be thinner. I should be richer. I should be better at riding my horse. I should be do, 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 do. But in reality, you're not. In reality, you are what you are right now. So this is something that I want you to start practicing is getting on that scale and learning how to read the number that it says and say yes to it. Say yes. And then, you know, this is a whole nother thing that we can dive into, but what we do to work through that resistance that we feel, that's the most important thing is to notice what's going on. When you step on that scale or you try on a pair of jeans and you don't like the circumstance, how you say yes to that, how you say yes to the thoughts that come through about it. I notice I'm thinking this. Yes, I am. Yes, I am thinking this. Yes, I do feel this way. So it's not about pushing away negative thoughts and feelings about a certain circumstance. It's about learning to say yes to what's going on right now like you chose it. Because it feels like we don't. It feels like we are out of control with our choices. We can't control our thoughts. We can't control our feelings. And I'm telling you, this is the starting place for how you get to the place where you can control that stuff. 
It's by taking a look at your situation, at your circumstances and going, yes, this is this way because it's this way. Yes, I chose this. Yes, it's like this. And you know, everything that I'm doing right now is just lip service, but if you take this practice today, everything that comes your way today, you know, whether the wind is blowing, whether the mosquitoes are biting you, whether something good or something bad happens, you say yes to it because this is how it is. And notice if there is a sense of relief, relief from all the stress and anxiety that you're feeling because of the constant resisting to what is. And and it's almost like it's not giving up by any means because like I said, the circumstances can change. They're not set in stone just because you say yes to them. They actually become friendly to you when you learn to say yes then you can have your power back and you can work on these things that are in your control. Circumstances, not in your control because they've already happened. They're already the way that they are. So learn to be their friend. Learn to befriend befriend the thoughts that are coming through your mind. You know, and that's why I say writing this stuff down, writing down your thoughts in the morning in a thought journal is so excellent. Just to sit down for like five minutes while you're waking up, while you're, while you're drinking your coffee and just notice what comes up for you and write that stuff down. It's so simple and so easy. Write it down and then just look at it and say, yes, that's the thought I'm thinking. Yes. Don't try to change it. Don't try to be better than you are right now. Don't try to do anything. Just accept who and what you are right now. And then just, I just challenge you to see what happens. Practice that for a week, five minutes in the morning. It'll change your life. It will change your life. And I don't have any proof other than it has for me and it can for you, but you have to experience it for yourself. It has to be something that you want to do. Okay. Am I making sense? Good deal. The next thing that I want to go over for you today is number two is make it easy. So, you know, if we kept going with what what I was just talking about, learning to say yes to your circumstances, if that's not easy, then figure out what's getting in the way that's making it hard. And usually it'll be um, a resistive thought against saying yes to the present reality. So just say yes to that thought. So if you notice that a thought goes through, like, I don't like it like this, it shouldn't be this way, say yes to the thought. That's a thought I'm thinking, it's a circumstance. Yes, thought, hello, 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 friendly little thought, it's okay. You can come through my mind and then go right on out and away you go, yes, make it easy. Stop resisting, stop struggling, stop fighting against it and just say yes. So make it easy. Here's a little lesson that I wanna talk about for that. Uh, So with this homeschooling thing for the past two months, I've been helping my fifth grade son with his math. So he's been doing long division and fractions. Do you remember doing that in fifth grade? (laughs) I am really good at it now. (laughs) Anyway, so long division, um, learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. That's what we've been working on. So he's struggling. Like when we first sat down, like the first couple weeks, tears would come every time, right? Lots of resistance, lots of struggle, lots of hardship, stress, anxiety through the roof. So he's lucky enough to have a mother who has a math brain who actually gets how to do those operations of long division and fractions. And um, I just know it's easy for me. Okay, so it's easy for me. Why is it easy for me? Because, Because I believe math is easy. I believe it. I believe that it's just a system of patterns. If you can count to 10 and you understand that math is a pattern, you can do any math problem in the world. And then there are just a handful, like five, maybe six rules that you need to learn and obey and know that they're just consistent all the time. So math is very easy when you follow that. When does it become hard? When you're confused, you don't know the rules, you don't know your math facts. Um, you're, you're, like I said, you're confused. It becomes hard. So I'm sitting down with my son and, um, 
I see the first thing right off the bat is he has having a tr trouble with long division because he doesn't know how to multiply single digits. He doesn't know his math facts. He doesn't know what seven times eight is. So the first thing that we do is I set up a very simple system for him, five minutes a day where he does his math facts. At first I wrote out flashcards. They're just flashcards that he can do five minutes going through. It doesn't have to be fast or anything. He just has to start through the repetition of learning his math facts. And then I found an app. So then all of a sudden it can track whether he's getting them right or wrong. It's very easy to do, easy to execute. So after he kind of gets to where he's firing on those math facts a little faster, then we work through the rules of division. And I just sit down with him. And um, when he's like, oh, I don't know how to do this, you know, we're dividing, um, you know, like 1,278 by 63. It's a huge number, right? It's, it should be hard. This should be hard. He looks at this huge number and he's like, this is hard. I'm like, no, math is easy. Let's make it easy. How can we redistribute these numbers so we get the correct answer and it's easy? So we just start breaking it down, tiny, tiny little steps, and we make it easy. And then we repeat the process over and over and over until he sees that it's easy. But if you're trying to do too much, too fast, too hard, you're not gonna get the right answer. And, it's, and you're gonna quit, you're gonna feel frustrated and all these bad feelings. So. We took, and it, and it took a couple of months of just repeating this process over and over again before he starts figuring this out because lo and behold, my son has a math brain too, like his mama. We have math brains. And then we start connecting. And then math, not only is it easy, it's fun. So I take a five-year-old, a, five a fifth grader who is in tears over his math, hates it, like is, is throwing tamper, tamper, um, temper tantrums and fits rage, trying to break things, break his pencil, hurting my table, to smiling and looking forward to his math. Because I had that philosophy to say, math is easy, let me show you. How can we make math easy, okay? So it's a philosophy to make it hard or make it easy. So why did I tell you that long old story about my, my son and his math? Because how can you do that with your weight loss, with your fitness? Maybe you wanna work out uh, consistently throughout the week. Maybe you want to eat clean and healthy and you want to consistently lose two pounds a week, one to two pounds a week until you hit your goal weight, okay? How can you make that easy? Exercise and eating healthy are easy. If you don't believe that, if you think it's hard, hard's going to show up and prove you right. But how can you shift from going, okay, I do believe it's hard. It is effing hard. How do I make it easy? That's the better question. You don't, want to, you, you don't want to just keep saying, exercising and eating right, it's hard. If you keep telling yourself that, it, the hard will show up for you every time. You'll be able to prove it to me. You'll say, Andrea, it's hard. I'll say, oh yeah, where's your proof? You'll list it for me. You'll say, here's my proof, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You think it's hard, so it's hard for you. Guess what? I think it's easy. Why is it easy for me? Here's why. I break it down into very simple, few, not many steps so that I can make it work for me. Okay, so what's my system, do you say? How do you make it easy, Andrea, right? So that is up to you to figure out because it's not easy. My easy won't be easy for you. So, but let me, let me just take you through an example to, to let you know how it's easy for me. So working out is easy for me. I love it. So that's the opposite of working out is hard. I hate it. If you're the type of person right now who wants to work out consistently all the time, you know it'll improve your horse riding, but you're thinking things like, working out is hard, I hate it, you'll never do it. You will never do it. How can you show yourself that working out is easy and you love it? How can you do that? Here's a few quick things that you can do that, that, that I know. So like for me, um, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of my home gym one of these days, but right at, inside this door, there's a door right there, I have a TV and I have an Amazon Fire Stick and I have an app called Beachbody On Demand that I'm an annual member. I pay one time a year to have all a ton of exercises right at my fingertips. So it is very easy for me to put my workout clothes on, drink a quick shot of something that gives me energy, come down, turn on the TV, open up the app, find my workout for the day and push play. Very easy for me to do. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to create the exercises. I don't have to wonder what I'm going to do. It takes all that decision fatigue and stress out of the equation because I always pick a fitness program that I can stick to and that I love. 
And then I tell myself, here's another thing. What if I don't feel like it? Because earlier this week, believe me, I didn't feel like it. So what do I do? How do I stay on track and not go weeks and weeks and weeks until I finally feel like it? I tell myself something like, it's okay, Andrea, that you don't feel like it. This is what I tell myself. These are thoughts I think. It's okay that you don't feel like it. You are human, okay? You're not always going to feel like this, feel like it. But I tell you what, today you don't go 110% on your workouts. You go 85% and just get started, okay? Just for that first five minutes of your workout, just do it. You can do it. Just go through the motions. And I guarantee you every freaking time I do that, every time, five minutes in, the work, the, the, that post work, or not even the post workout, that, but that in the moment workout endorphins start to release the hormones that drive my body start to go and I feel good. But I give myself that permission to make it easy. What would make it easy for me to push play if I didn't think it was going to kill me? If I thought it felt good, that makes it easy for me. Do you see what I'm saying? Make it easy. Same thing with food. Okay, if you're putting yourself on some type of weight loss plan that's super calorie restricted, takes away everything that you love and you feel deprived and hungry the whole entire time, yeah, I bet you will lose weight. I bet you have put yourself on a calorie deficit enough that if you could figure out a way to stick to that meal plan, you would lose weight. But what happens? This is hard. It sucks. I don't want to do it. So you're going to prove to yourself that you're right. So what if you start saying eating healthy is easy. I love putting nourishing food into my body. I love losing weight. It feels good to lose weight. That, that is the whole motivation behind me creating the Cowgirl Up Diet is because I have figured out that that, that's, that that was the motivation for creating the Cowgirl Up Diet in the first place is because I was struggling. It was hard. I was working out harder and I was trying harder to manage my meals and prep and do all these hard things. And I'm like, screw it. I'm getting fatter. I can't keep doing this. It's too hard. How can I make it easier? I guarantee you, December 2017, I sat there with my pen and my paper and I said, this freaking sucks. How can I make it easier? And that's when the Cowgirl Up Diet was born because I figured out, I'm sitting there going, I want to lose weight. Why is it so freaking hard? I have all this fat stored on my body. I want it off. It can't be that hard. It's stored energy. It should be easier. And as soon as I had that mentality, it should be easier. I want it easier. The easy, it just like fell in my lap. Not even kidding you. It fell in my lap. (laughs) And I started experimenting and learning and was excited about it. And it was like, I mean, those of you who followed me for a long time, I've shared about it. It just, it did. It fell off my body. And here I stand, you know, almost three years later, feel the same way. Being at my ideal weight having energy, having um, the ability to concentrate, it's easy because I wanted to make it easy. How could I go out and figure out a way? So if you're following a meal plan right now, some type of diet, and you don't look forward to it, it's not easy. You need to make a change. I'm not saying that you should get rid of the meal plan. Not at all. It could be working for you. But what are you doing to make it hard? Figure that out. Um, And I want to talk more about this. So this can be something that we can just start brainstorming um, and piecing together on an individual basis. That would be awesome. Okay. So that is what I have for number two. Now, number three, make it easy, man. That's just, it needs to be. If you're struggling, it's too hard. You got to make it easy. Ah, Number three. Oh, I can't wait to tell you this one. Okay. Number three. Ah, This is where it all ties together because it's not always easy. (laughs) Now tell me that doesn't sound contradictory, but it's okay to do hard things. Like, okay, here, here's the great example. Let's go back to the math and the sun. Um, my other son is a freshman in high school and he is doing some geometry right now, but it's led into like, I think it's trig or calculus. I don't know what those two are really. Um, but he lays out, he he doesn't usually ask for help. He doesn't do that. He doesn't have the same personality as my other son. So he, but he, so when I know he needs my help, he needs my help because he can't figure it out on his own. So, um, he says, mom, I need this help with this math problem. So he lays and I'm like, whoa, that's hard. (laughs) It's hard math. It's hard math, right? The higher up you get in math, it's hard. 
but it's a different type of hard. It's not like it's impossible to figure it out. We still take that whole, it's a very complex mathematical equation that we're looking at. It's a beast, right? So what we still, I still take that same philosophy. Math is easy. How do we break this down to make it easy? And we just, we laid out our rules that we know about math and we took it piece by piece and we worked through a system until we got our answer. And it was so fun. So we took, yes, a very hard math problem in a different sense than what I'm using it here. And we made it easy. So that's what I want to tell you. This next thing that I'm talking about takes all that stuff. Um, Push-ups pull-ups, um, cardio. It's not, are you kidding me? It's not easy, whatever. <laughs> but how do we make it easy? So when we get into that place where it is hard, you give 110%, right? That is where we're at. Yeah. Losing weight. If you need, if you need to lose 50 pounds and you want to lose, you know, two pounds a week, that's 25 weeks. That is a half a year of commitment. No to, you know, one step forward, two steps back. No, lose this weight and then gain it back. It is a commitment to this excellence that you're striving for. So you need to make it easy in your every day to day life so that you can execute it. But here's the next thing that you need to do if you have that 50 pounds that you need to lose or a hard math problem that you need to figure out, you are going to commit to 2 how do I write it? <laughs> Words are hard, right? Words are easy. See, I've been telling myself this. Words are easy, Andrea. You can do this. Words are easy. Spelling is easy. <laughs> My brain's like, no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, to performing. Yeah, see, easy. Now let me make sure. I do want to spell it right. Yeah, performing. Ha! Commit to performing at a high level. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. So, the the what has um really put that in my face lately is this documentary that I was watching just came out. It's on ESPN and it's called The La The Last Dance. It is a documentary about Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Um, it kind of just does a, a history and a walkthrough from the beginning to the, the last season when they go for their sixth championship. Oh my gosh. I am only on the four. There's 10 episodes in this documentary series. It is so good. You have to let me know if you watched it. And if you haven't, you need to check it out if you're looking for that high level of motivation that you, you know, if you could just get a little sweat drop <laughs> off of Michael Jordan and somehow take that DNA and put it in you so that you can, uh, you know, accomplish a fraction of what that man has done in his life. Wow, right? So let's see if we can dissect some of his thinking and figure out how to do that and apply that to weight loss, nutrition, performing at your, your best level with your horses. How cool would that be? So there, there was something um, in, in the beginning, you know, they're just going through and they're listing off these amazing accomplishments that Mike, Michael Jordan, right? He's not even human, um, what he's done. The truth is, if you just sit there and you just don't have any judgments, you don't know that he's, in, what if you didn't know he was that amazing? What if we didn't judge him like that? Because that's part of the deal. We put this barrier. We're like, you, you know, and like we do that with Jesus, which we probably should with Jesus. But, but this is still the same. We do the same thing. We, we do this thing where we put them on this pedestal. I'm not trying to be blasphemous here when I say don't put Jesus on a pedestal. But we forget the man was human. Yes, he was a human being. Michael Jordan is a human being. So what if we didn't judge them? as being so far away from us. And we just started analyzing what they do. Then you just slow down and you just start listening. So he's just a regular man. What's he do? Michael Jordan, not Jesus. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so Michael Jordan is talking about his experience in certain basketball games, right? And we take off that ability to judge him as this insanely successful basketball player. And we just is like, he's, he's just like my brother. He's like my best friend. Yeah, me and me and MJ, we go way back. <laughs> and, and you know, we visit every day and we're just on the on the same level. Because you are. He's a human. You're a human. 
And um, we go, okay, sweet. So I'm listening to him be interviewed and I'm, you know, I'm like, wow, he, he, if he can do it, I can do it. It sounds so ridiculous, but I want you to start thinking like that. If he can do it, I can do it. Because, why? Because he's a human and I'm a human. That makes, we're doing math. We're equating things. <laughs> I hope you're with me on this. So he's a human, I'm a human. He can do it. I can do it. They're even. Now we just got to figure out what it is that he's doing. Here's what I want to say. He is committing like no one else to performing at a high level. That, that's, that's his philosophy. It's a high, and so you've heard things like, and you decide which one resonates best for you. I am going to do my best. And that was one that worked for me for a long time. It was a thought that I was using. I'm just going to do, I'm going to always do my best. I'm going to do my best. And that's a great one. It just depends on what kind of spin the old brain puts on it. Well, what I started noticing, especially in my workouts, that I was calling bullshit on what my best was in my workout. So I'd go through probably about 85%. I'm like, yep, that was my best for today. Good job, Andrea. And now that I look back on it, I was like, wow, I was really selling myself short. That was my best. That was mediocre. And so I think part of the deal is, is we're not honest with ourselves, with what we think we're capable of, of committing to and performing, what our daily actions are. We are selling ourselves so short. And that, that's, the, that's the difference. So if you have a weight loss goal and you want to lose 50 pounds, you commit to performing at a very high level. And yes, you can do it. Yes, you can. How do you know you're performing at a high level? How do you know? How do you know that? That's where you get to write your own rules. Because I guarantee you, Michael Jordan's high level of performing is so dissected and so exact for him. And that is where that ultimate, 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 it's another one, ultimate um, accountability. Comes in. Your ultimate accountability. So what do I mean? In, in one of the examples, is which stick with Michael Jordan. Um, so Scott, in the middle of all their success, Scottie Pippen uh, gets hurt and he's out for the season and if you knew the stats of what was happening he was absolutely Scottie Pippen was ranked number two behind Michael Jordan in the entire NBA and they worked together as a team the two of them with the rest of their teammates made incredible things happen so here you have um, Scottie Pippen out so now it's it's Michael by himself Michael, like, we're buds, right? So MJ and, and he's, you know, and he wants someone else to step up and fill Scottie Pippen's shoes. He wants it to be Dennis Rodman, but it's not happening. Like, he, he's just, like, like he's, try, he's frustrated. He's trying to get his team to fill this hole that's left from Scottie being out, and it's not happening. So what does he do? Do, what, what does he do? You know, does he hammer on their asses more? No, 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 no. This is what you guys, that's why you have to go watch that documentary. He does not. He holds himself to an even higher level, an even higher level. He's like, well, they're not doing it. They're not, and he's not mad at them. He's just like, no one's stepping up. So guess who's it going to, I'm going to do. And it's not this martyr thing. That's why you have to listen to MJ's words, his interview, the way he talks. You can tell it has nothing about him being a martyr or, um, you know, feeling like he's let down or anything. His commitment to excellence, to winning no matter what, because that is the highest priority he has in life is to win at basketball games. He is going to do whatever it takes. And whatever it takes is not putting it on his teammates. He wants somebody to step up. That seems to be the logical path. But when that doesn't happen, he's like, well, that's all right. I'll just do it. I'm going to do this. I am going to do this. I am going to step up to my level of accountability, my level of success and determination and whatever it takes. I am going to do it. And he did. Like there were, you just have to go watch those stats. It was insane the amount of points that he was able to score um, against some teams that wanted to kill him. They wanted him dead. And the refs back then were not um, 
like they are now. They were letting him play physical basketball. Like he should have gotten hurt, but he he didn't he didn't blame any of them for that. He just was had his tunnel vision on so much for that high level of commitment to excellence, performing at this high level that only he could define, only he could define because of what he wanted. And he never put that on anyone else. I believe that right there is his secret sauce. He never put it on someone else. He was always looking, you want to run with me? Let's go boys. But he didn't make them or let them be the reason why it didn't work out for him. He never did. And does it, did it mean that he didn't make mistakes or lose basketball games? Oh, yes. There were times when he was, um, you know, outscoring anyone remotely in the ballpark and not just on the scoreboard, but with the assists and the rebounds and, uh, you know, all the basketball stats. He was blowing all of them out of the water, not just points, and still losing basketball games. So he was still like, I'm on this mission. I want to win basketball games. How do I do that? And, and, and if you, you just think of the, um, the residual results that, that came out of that, it, it's insane, right? That's when we judge him as being the, the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. But if you just go at this like he's your best friend, you know, there's no, no difference between you and him. Um, and you understand how he clearly committed to performing at a high level, and then you take that and you go, okay, I am going to perform at a high level. What does that even mean? What is a high level for me? Am I doing my best? A high level. So um, for, for my workouts, um, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next week about the episode I'm going to do on, on tracking. I'm going to give you some actual taxi, tactics to help you measure wh- where your high level is. I can't wait for that one. So <clears throat> for, my, for my workouts, um, w- one of the things that I do is, yeah, if I, don't, if I don't feel like getting started, I'll have that little talk with myself that gets me started. And then once I recognize the fact that I am started, I'll use little tracking things to go, um, like, like the, the workout that I did today, um, doing pull-ups. I'm getting better at pull-ups. Um, and so the last time I did it, I could not, um, you know, I just maxed myself out. And so that, that, that's what I'll do. I'll go, okay. Um, but what was the result of that? Like my body, my mind said yes, the whole entire, I said yes until I realized my muscles were so fatigued that they would not lift me up there. Most people are too afraid, ooh, (laughs) spitting. (laughs) They're too afraid to let themselves get to that place where their muscles seriously fatigue and they can't lift themselves up. Your mind will get in your way before because they're scared. They're scared they'll get hurt. They'll scare. Who knows what they're afraid of? You know if you've been in that. But that's the types of fears that you got to work through. So I, I'm an expert exerciser. I know I'm not going to injure myself um, because I'm using proper form, but I'm lifting myself up to this place where I can't. I'm saying yes, 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 until the body cannot go anymore. And then I'm done. I can't do it. But the result of that is stronger muscles. So today when I do the very same workout, um, after my muscles have had a chance to grow and heal, I um, can do it at a, at a higher level. I'm like, yeah, so they're, they're you know, so tracking, tracking the, the comparison of where I was yesterday to where I am today, where I was last week to where I am today. Dang. So, you know, I got a couple choices. I can um, quickly celebrate that because it empowers me to go you are kicking butt good girl keep going and then it's like okay let's bring it let's get even better at these pull-ups what what is my high level of of um of excellence that i'm uh, that i'm striving for you you know what's that next step can i get there and it's just a fun game it's just a game it's a game that i love to play it drives me it drives me to keep going but it's the excellence The high level, performing at a high level is defined by me. I think that is where the biggest thing is. If you let it be someone else determining what that high level is, number one, you're going to resist because it's theirs. You don't, it's it's theirs. I, I guarantee you that's the secret to what Michael Jordan was doing. His high level was defined by him. So if you define your high level and you achieve that, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks at all, ever. It only matters 
what you're feeling as you're working towards that. And I guarantee you, if you say yes to your current situation, okay, if you make things easy for yourself, then committing to this high level of performance, you're gonna look forward to. It is going to drive you in a positive direction for the rest of your life. It's awesome, okay? All right, you guys, that is what I have for you today. That's what I wanted to go over. <laughs> That's what I'm literally what I'm using right now to um, just this. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I don't. I'm out of words. I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So here's what I want to say. I got a, a few things coming down the pipe. Uh, that's how they say that, right? <laughs> Number one, I'm revamping my Facebook group um, that is called the Cowgirl Up Fitness Community. It is a health coaching um, and accountability and support group for horsewomen who know that getting in great shape to ride the horses is one of the most important things in their day and they want to make it a better priority. Um, I, I am doing some things to turn up the heat on check-ins and accountability that I have coming. So if you're not in that group, I urge you to join. Just go to Facebook and search Cowgirl Up Fitness Community and then click join the group and I'll let you in. The other thing that I want to tell you about is I have, I want to make things easy for you. So I am developing, it's almost finished, I just need to package it up pretty and roll it out to you guys. It is a 21 day meal plan that tells you exactly what to eat. Um, for 21 days, it gives you the shopping list, the meal plan, and the recipes, and it's all food. I want this easy, right? That's a, that's a that's a, a philosophy that I have. That you can just go to your your regular grocery store. You don't have to order things. You don't have to do anything weird. It's all good, healthy, real whole food that will help you move from being a sugar burner, so you're burning sugar, glucose for energy, into a fat burning state where you're you're burning the stored body fat for energy, which allows you to easily um, lose weight. Easy, this is what I say, I want it easy for you. Uh, yeah, so that's rolling out June 5th is when I'm, oh gosh, I can't believe I just said that, but this is what I need, high level of accountability right there for you, June 5th, we're about a little over a week away, it's going to be available to you, um, my Cowgirl Up, uh, Cowgirl Up Diet members are going to get that as their bonus for sticking, with, as a thank you and a bonus, um, anyone new, it'll be a great entry price, um, it won't break the bank, I promise. And then, what else did I want to say? Um, there's one more thing. Oh, my last thing that I want to leave you with is if you want me to talk about something, if there's something you're struggling with and you need help, you want me to explain in detail or um, choose for our topic for our next Cowgirl Up or a future Cowgirl Up, pff, Cowgirl Up Health Coach for Horsewomen episode, um, get a hold of me and I will start making a list of those so that I am talking about what you want to hear and what you need help with, because that's my mission with this deal, is to take you where you are right now, your current circumstances, and get you those results that you're looking for. That's the process for all of this. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and we will see you next week. All right, let me see if there's any um, messages or anything that you guys want me to talk about right now, and I'll answer those for you. Real quickly, lots of ladies on, thank you guys. Okay, Kimberly, you want to know, do you have a suggestion for meal replacement drinks? Something I could try without joining a membership. Meal replacement shakes. Um, so, that you could try without joining a membership. The only one, um, as far as a meal replacement shake that I've ever used and love is Shakeology. So, that's the only one that I can attest to because I have not tried any of the other ones. Um, 2012 is when I started drinking that. This is 20, so it's eight years I have been drinking Shakeology. What I love about it is the um, quality and integrity of the ingredients that goes into the product, the wide range of nutrition. So I literally do not take a multivitamin when I'm drinking Shakeology. I love the digestive properties in it. I've been studying a lot about gut biome. 
um, and um, what we need to do to care for our guts and how much that drives almost everything that we're doing, including um, fat storing and fat burning hormones and our immunity system. So Shakeology has that component in there. Um, it's a great protein source, um, comes in a variety of flavors. It's pretty darn tasty. Uh, yeah, so that's why I drink it. You do not have to have a, a monthly membership. They sell it that way. You save money if you do it, but you can actually get a sampler box just to taste it. Um, so Kimberly, I could send you a link on that. Um, or if you just go to uh, teambeachbody.com, you can search Shakeology and find their sampler pack. It's like, um, I don't even know. I haven't even looked for a long time. I don't know how much it costs. Probably uh, maybe, I'm guessing it's under $50, but it might, yeah, it's under 50. But you get, you know, several little things of it to try. Maybe it's like 20. I don't know. Between 20 and 50. Don't quote me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So give it a try. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Both answer raised. Love you guys. Okay. Um, Linda, off topic, I need to know more teaching math. My kids are so frustrated. Oh gosh. Oh uh, yeah, not, not, uh, uh, let, me, let me think. So Linda, if you go on YouTube, this is what was actually helping me because like in my head it clicks, but trying to help these kids, um, they, they need teachers who are used to teaching at, to their level, right? So if you go on YouTube, there is this great guy, um, I think it's like, I wish my, I'm using my phone. It's like Math Antics or something like that, his channel is. Um, and he came up first when I did, um, you know, learning to learning long division or how to multiply fractions. His It was like Math Antics or Math Fanatic, but it's a man that teaches with a whiteboard and he just breaks it down very simply. So um, I think YouTube is a great resource for helping kids learn math because there are some badass teachers out there that know how to break it down simply. Um, yeah, so that, that's what I would do. <laughs> how funny. Uh, so you won't be seeing episodes of me teaching math anytime soon. Okay, watched it. You saw his commitment to winning and he um, expected his teammates to work hard. Yeah, candy, right? Good, I'm glad you watched it. Don't you love it? Okay. Uh, can I get Shakeology from you? Yes, uh, absolutely. I still um, have my coaching account, so I'll send you a link. I'll just message you when I get done. Oh, come on. I'm trying to expand Gidget's comment. I don't know why it does that sometimes. I can't. There it goes. Ha! <laughs> uh, Gidget, thank you. Even though I struggled, I love listening to you. Even though I struggle, I love listening to you because you are so motivating and love the groups and seeing and hearing everyone's day to day. Thank you, lady. Hey, we're always going to struggle, right? That's just, I try to fight that for a long time, right? But as soon as I said yes, see, this is brand new for me too. As soon as I learned, because it is always about the strategy to avoid the struggle. Um, and I kind of went down that path a little bit with the cowgirl up diet. Um, that's where we have, we have to be very aware that we're never going to avoid struggle. The quicker that we can learn how to say, yes, I'm struggling. Yes. Here's the struggle. Then we can turn it around and go, okay, how do I make this easier? Number one way to make it easier in the beginning is to go, yes, I admit I'm struggling. This is hard. What, what's going on? And, and just to look at it like that. Um, because I think that is truly that place where God steps in when you, you just admit I'm struggling and the struggle is here. The struggle will always be here. Um, that, that God will give you, provide you with what you, and he always is, right? God is always providing us with what we need. It's just when we're saying no and we're resisting, we, we're saying no and we're resisting his answers and his solutions too because we can't see them. We're just so stuck in the struggle that we can't see what's there. So um, not, not saying that you're doing that, Gidget, but just letting you guys know that if you find yourself struggling, just start saying yes to it. You know, it's kind of almost like, oh, I admit I have a problem. <laughs> you know, like if you're an alcoholic or, uh, you know, we're drugs or food or some type of addiction. We're just saying, yes, yes, I admit th this is hard. I admit that I'm thinking these thoughts. I admit it. 
and then watch for that sense of relief that comes over. And then, um, then the fun begins because we can learn to make it easy and we can, uh, we can already be committed to that high level of performing the MJ. I'm going to MJ that crap out of this thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I love answering you guys' comments too. So, okay. Can you talk about losing belly fat in a future video? I need to lose three inches. Thank you for giving me a topic. Absolutely, Rhonda. You got it. I love the podcast suggestions. Fallon's is the bomb. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you online and for our next episode next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great day.